Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be taking a quick look at my analytics and how we can use some of the metrics in there to one, help us out with a bit of time and two, to have a look at personal accountability for Teams adoption. Hi, I'm Gavin Jones, I work on Modern Workplace Transformations and all the tips we put on YouTube come out of real life examples or comments from our YouTube viewers. So if you want to know something, make sure you leave a comment below. We've got a new video on Teams coming out every Tuesday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time we release a new video. And if you haven't already, there's a free download link in the description below to download a deck that we use for training that goes along with our full basic training videos on YouTube. If you've not seen those already, they're also in the description below. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at my analytics. Okay, so you might have seen some emails popping up in your inbox and you might not have ever been through them in much detail, but they're really useful and we're going to have a look at my analytics now, both the email and the web view dashboard. So here we are, and here's one of the weekly emails that I've got. Um, I'm on the focus plan that I self-enrolled in, which I can show you briefly, um, which is why focus times popped up at the top. Um, show you how many days of focus time we've booked, which I'll come on to later. Um, gives you nice little insight and then a quick overview of each area. So focus, well-being, network and collaboration. But what we're going to do is click on uh, learn more. Before we do that, just wanted to jump into there's the insights bar, which as long as you're on an email, um, you've always got access to insights. Insights runs off my analytics and gives you some prompts using AI to uh, give you some nudges about how you could use email or your time better. So well worth pinning that and keeping that front of mind. So the suggestions change based on what you're doing. So if you're in your sent items, it can show you an aggregation of how many people have seen your emails, stuff like that. Um, and also tries to scan your emails to see if there's any actions that you might want to know. Um, suggest people that you might want to put into your network so you can keep track on whether you've kept in touch with them enough or not. And also people in your network that you may not have kept up to date with, it then pops up and suggests maybe you want to schedule a meeting with them. And just one click of a button, you can schedule a meeting and catch up with them. So well worth having the insights pinned to the side of your Outlook if you don't use that regularly. Um, we're going to click on Learn More. And that's going to jump us out into the web and go to our My Analytics dashboard. If you didn't get the email and you want to get there, you click on the Waffle menu and My Analytics there. If it's not there, then go to All Apps and scan down and it'll be down here somewhere for you to add in. So we're in my analytics, and the first bit is that you get a summary similar to what was in the email, but we're just gonna dive into three areas, so focus, well-being, and collaboration. So in the focus, uh, if you're not in the focus plan, I think you get an option to enroll in the focus plan. What the focus plan does is that it knows through lots of research that Microsoft's done that you know it's best to schedule big blocks of time so that you can actually do some work yourself, whatever your main job is or whatever your main priority is. You need to protect that time from people being able to book meetings and you know you need some time to actually do work rather than just doing busy work or being always available or scheduling your time to, in too small a chunk so you can't do any work in that time. So if you've got a meeting, then half an hour, then another meeting, then half an hour, you, know, you might have four hours over the day it's split up into half hour blocks. It's not as good as having four hour chunk of time. You can really get something meaty done. Um, so the focus plan, if I jump into the plan configuration, you can actually set your work week and that defaults from whatever you've set in uh, Outlook. And then if you enroll on the focus plan, you can either have it send you reminders to say you've not booked some time, you haven't got enough time booked and you'll get prompts when people are sending you meeting invites saying, you know, do you really want to accept this meeting? Because we've noticed you haven't got enough time to actually do anything next week. If you accept it, maybe book some focus time. Or you can have it, which I've done, on automatically book focus time. So that's going to stick in two-hour chunks of time in your calendar every day for the next 
two working weeks um, and it does that for you. And then the benefit of having it does for you is that when it's blocked out by focus time, as soon as you're into that focus time in your calendar, it turns all the notifications off for you. So it puts Teams on Do Not Disturb, so you won't get anything through until the end of that focus time. So it really does allow you to focus um, and why we're covering it as part of the Teams stuff. So um, obviously you can get overwhelmed with things popping up in Teams. You do need to also plan time that you're going to do some work and this is an automatic way of doing that and also turning those notifications off so you don't have to remember to do that as well. If I jump back, the overview of Focus Plan says, well, how much time focus time have you got booked? If um, the automatic algorithm's having problem trying to book focus timing because you've got too many meetings, then some of these won't be a tick. It'll be, you know, you need review and you can go and book that time yourself. Um, or move your meetings around to sort that out. And then underneath, then you get a, uh idea about how much time you've got to focus versus how much time you're collaborating. Uh, my metrics are uh, not accurate right now uh, due to other reasons, but you can get an overview of, about how much you're doing. It's good just to see the metrics so you can see, you know, wow, I didn't realise I was collaborating that much. It might be the other way around and you've got way too much time collaboration and you can't actually do anything. Um, and focus time really help you out and these boxes pop up and gives you you know research based prompts um, and using your information to to give you some nudges as well so main thing I want to look at is calibration but just before we do that let's look at well-being especially because the article that Microsoft put out the other day um, showing that especially in the current time that people are spreading their work over longer hours and they're working more into the evenings and really, we want to be still, whatever the situation, you're either working or you're not working and just stop. You don't want to bleed into uh, work and life. You need time to recharge. And um, again, this, this day is not accurate for, for what, what would usually be happening. But you can see that it also pops up some research thing. And I love this one, that more than 40% of our creative ideas come from when we're taking breaks or, you know, not working. So the fact that you want to stop work is actually beneficial to work because you're going to be thinking of ideas, solutions to problems, whilst you're not working, um, and that's more beneficial for the company. So don't think that you need to be working 60, 80-hour weeks um, because that's what, you know, you need to do to do your job. Actually, you're probably performing less well than if you took breaks and finished early because you're getting paid for your ideas and your solutions to problems not just how much time you're replying to emails so then uh, that's good to keep track on um you can see you know if you have been working out of hours it tells you um what what's uh, what you've been up to and how to try and fix it and then the main thing i want to look at was collaboration so now my analytics pulls in emails and meetings uh, but also chats and calls from Teams or Skype for Business. Uh, at the time of recording, it doesn't pull through, I believe, stuff that you actually do in a team. So like working on a file together or you know, if you're writing some conversations, threads in a team, that's not pulled through to my analytics right now. Um, but anything you did in private chat or a call is recorded and, 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 and shown back to you. So you get some good uh, good insight into meeting habits. So even if you um, you know think you're you're doing really well, actually I'm surprised that actually I'm sending invitations uh, without much notice, which it's uh, it's marking me down on. Uh, I'm not responding uh, well to meetings uh, at the moment. Looks like so that's giving me a, a nag as well. And then also gives you some idea of multitasking. So whether you're personally sending Emails or chats during a meeting, probably uh, not good if you're not paying attention. But the main thing I want to look at for uh, you know personal accountability for Teams adoption, which we can all get better at, is this bottom bit. So it's saying communication habits, and it's showing you a graph of the last four weeks of data, which I guess all of the data in my analytics is just an aggregate over the last four weeks. By time of day, how much are you sending and reading emails versus how much chats and calls. And even though you might be thinking, well, I'm spending loads of time in Teams and uh, that's not recorded, uh, don't spend much time in private chat, 
even if that's the case, and obviously I'm full on to using Teams uh, as much as possible, it did still surprise me the amount of emails that I'm uh, getting. So you're thinking, well, could is there anything else I could do to help others not to send those emails? Um, but even the ones that I'm sending, it's like, could I have converted those into a private chat if it was private? Or could I have converted those into moving them into Teams? So what this doesn't know, obviously, is whether they're external emails or not, whether they're company briefings that might be best on email, potentially. Um, it doesn't know that. But what you can do is maybe surprise yourself with that information. Go back through your Outlook and just have a look at your sent items and think, you know, maybe once a week or so, could I have done anything else to either help others not send me that email in the first place or me not reply to that email? So if they are internal emails, you probably could have used Teams. If they're external ones, then at least you're a bit uh, happier that you're using Teams as much as you could do and you're just going back into email to send stuff externally. So I hope that helps. Just a quick overview of my analytics if you've not seen before. Also some tips about how to use it for Teams adoption. If you didn't know, you could view that sort of information. Remember to give the video a like if you liked it. So click subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't already to get notified every time we release a new video, which we've got a new video on Teams coming out every Tuesday. If you haven't already, click the free download link in the description below to get a deck that details all of our basic tips all in one place. The use of training that goes along with our full basic training tutorials on YouTube, which are also linked below if you've not seen those already. So thanks for watching so far, and we'll see you in the next video.